Hello guys, Chris here and welcome back to another Sunday video. In this one, my friends, we're going to be testing a beast from the past. This is 2010's GeForce GTX 470. And it released 12 years ago for 349 US dollars. Kind of a normal price for a 70 SKU GPU, you know? Not like today's RTX 3070s that are costing like $1,000 or something. <sighs> and it has quite an interesting design, doesn't it? It looks like kind of a mechanical eye or something like that. It's from Gigabyte. It's just a blower style model of the card, so it probably will run a little bit hotter than the normal GTX 470s. The nor I, I guess these are the normal as well. Anyways, <laughs> it's a 1.2 Gigabyte GPU, GDDR5 by the way. It has 448 CUDA cores. It is from the Fermi architecture, which is known to be very, very hot. But actually this blower style cooler does a decent job although it's quite loud and it consumes 215 watts of power which is almost the same as an RTX 3070 at 220 watts. I bought the 470 over here for 22 euros with two years of warranty in CEX uh, that was actually a very good deal in today's market. And let's put it to the test in 2022, shall we? And it is desktop time. You can check out the GPU here in MSI Afterburner, along with the latest NVIDIA drivers available for it, which are 391.35. These are already four years old, but, well, driver updates don't last forever, of course. Over in Tech Power Up's GPU-Z, you can check out all of the GPU specs, along with the 1.2 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. It supports DirectX 11, but it also supports DirectX 12 through the drivers, but unfortunately a lot of newer titles like Call of Duty Warzone for example, Cyberpunk 2077, God of War won't even run on this card, they won't launch at all, they just crash on startup. And finally over on the left you can see that we're running it with a Ryzen 9 5900X and 32 gigabytes of RAM, and if you're one of those people that think that this uh, will give us all of the FPS that we'll see in this video, well you're wrong, <laughs> because you only need a CPU that's capable enough of handling the GTX 470 at 99% utilization, and that's not really a hard task in 2022, obviously. So let's get into the first game. What? I can't believe Dying Light 2 actually launches in this card. A lot of older titles don't, but there's supposed to be a city there, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go for the settings anyway. 720p resolution, FSR performance. This is just how I left it with the GT1030, by the way. So pretty much everything is set to the minimum settings. What? Wait a second. It... Oh my god. Okay. Oh, wow. This is insanely weird. I have never seen something like this. So right now we're running at a resolution of about like 300p, it's a little bit lower than the... Oh my god, am I dead? I think I just died. <laughs> yeah, we're basically running 720p with FSR performance, which means that it runs at 360p, but then we also set the resolution scaling to 85% on top of that. I'm guessing the game has some graphical bugs with this card because, well, the technology just can't handle some of the effects. And then FSR tries to make up for it and it's just a blinking mess. So I'm going to turn off FSR to see how it looks. It will probably blink all over. Yeah, whenever you move, uh, the, the leaves go black. It is such a weird effect. It's only in vegetation, apparently. But there is vegetation in a lot of places in this game, though. Uh, anyways, I am actually surprised that this launches. <laughs> I'm really, really surprised. And I'm looking forward to testing, like, a GT610 in this game. <laughs> That's gonna be great. See, I'm still killing the zombies, so it's totally playable, right? I'm so sorry to start the, the video like this. You're probably going blind right now. I'm so sorry. Next up, we got PUBG, and we're playing at 1080p resolution using 100% render scaling and very low settings. Damn, look at those frames. Wow. Okay, so we're, we're far away from the map, of course, but this is pretty damn good. Also, does the ball float? Uh, yes, it does. 
Okay, we just landed, guys. I'm gonna start counting the FPS, and over here in sort of a forest area, we're getting around 40 frames per second. That's actually very impressive, because these are the most intensive areas in the entire map, whenever you are near trees and vegetation, basically. It's a little bit more taxing for the GPU. Uh, we are seeing a few frame time spikes, nothing really major, honestly. It's still completely playable, in my opinion. Uh, but it's something to keep in mind. It's not a completely smooth experience. For that, you'd need a little bit more VRAM, probably. But it's still very impressive, the FPS that we're getting. I guess if you have something like a GT710 with a 4th gen i3 or i5 CPU, and you really, really want to play some PUBG, you can do it if you upgrade your GPU to a GTX 470 or even a 460. It will do a decent job at 720p. But this is 1080p. It's performing really well for 1080p. Okay, approaching a little bit of a city area. Oh, there's a guy there. I hope he didn't see me. I still don't have a helmet. Hmm. Yeah, he did see me. All right, we got him. Oh, we're playing squads. I didn't notice that we're playing squads. I'm going to go away now. <laughs> Ooh. <gasps> nope, nope, you're not gonna get me, boy. I'm gonna try to go now. There he is. Come on! Ah, you bastard! <laughs> Next up is Red Dead Redemption 2. We're playing at 720p using VSync. We're not reaching 60 FPS, so it doesn't matter. Low settings, I can't change anything here because the game doesn't allow us to apply the changes. For example, if I want to lower the resolution, I can't apply anything because... We're out of VRAM. Like, that's that's counterintuitive, Rockstar. So, as expected, guys, this runs like absolute roach crap. And roach, th there he is. There's my boy. How's it going? Let me see your crap. Boy. No, no, don't do that. So, Red Dead Redemption 2 doesn't utilize Fermi GPUs completely. You can see that it's not at 99% utilization. It's far from it. Uh, but it's, it's the same for every Fermi graphics card that I've tested so far, even like GTX 580s, they are always underutilized and uh, this game just ends up running like crap, even at like 800 by 600 setting in the config files, you know. It just doesn't reach 20 frames per second and it's a, an awful experience. Just look at the frame time graph, you know. I mean... Yeah, let's let's move on. Let's play something that a GTX 470 can actually play very well. This is CSGO at 1080p using the low settings. I noticed that when the GPU is maxed out in CSGO, you, you tend to have a little bit more input lag. So it, it might be worth it to lock your FPS at like 144 or something like that. It will feel a little bit more responsive. Fuck Troy! <laughs> that was really bad. <laughs> At least we made it. All right, that was good. Oh, oh, oh okay. we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Did you see that, guys? No, no, that is not a one. Why did I switch to it? <laughs> I don't even have a beautiful knife in this game. Oh my God, Pasha! There's somebody. Just don't bend over. Okay. Okay, I heard that guy, yeah, okay. <laughs> Just spawn in the weirdest places, the worst places, like behind you and stuff. I hate it. Yeah, Pasha, I got you, boy, it's my revenge. No, he just spawned there. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> ah. Nice. All right, we're doing great now. Second place. No, I, he just... I hate these spawns, dude. It's so annoying. <laughs> No, 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 bend over, bend over. Come on, what are you doing? We got this. People, show yourselves. I want more kills, but try... <sighs> Stole my kill. Ah, bend over, bend over. Got him again. Come on, but try. Thank you very much. Ooh, that was a massive stutter there. First of the day, actually, in CSGO. Yeah, this didn't go well whatsoever, guys. I'm sorry I disappointed you, but the third place is, is bronze. Like... Bronze with 12-year-old equipment, it's it's not too bad, right? Battlefield 1 at 1080p resolution using the low settings. This is just slightly worse than a 750 Ti, I believe, in this game at least. Come on. Gosh, I haven't played this one in so long. I'm always missing those shots now. Oh. Gotta love these moments, right? Just in Battlefield. Oh. 
Come on. Come on. Let's go. Okay, he's dead. We good. We good. No. No. I just spawned, dude. I just spawned again. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Holy crap. Okay. We good. We good. They're conquering A, kind of. Yeah. There are quite a few of them here. There he is. One of them. Oh, incendiary. No, 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 no. But see, guys, this game released in 2016. It was a AAA title and a GTX 470 from 2010. Released six years earlier. Could play this game absolutely flawlessly. No stutters whatsoever. Wow, they did such a good job with optimization in Battlefield 1. The game still looks really good, even on low settings. Come on, there we go. There's, a, there's one here. Let's go. We got this. Nice. I'm getting the hang of this again. Let's see. There we go. Oops. What? How did you lose B? What the heck? I, I step outside of B for a second and you guys lose it. We good, we good, we good. Apex Legends. This is another game that doesn't really like older architecture of GPUs and older drivers and stuff like that. And we're playing this game at 800 by 600 resolution. I actually said it in the launch options. The game doesn't really support down to 800 by 600. That's why it shows up at 1024 by 768. And down here, you can see that everything is set to the lowest settings. So this is actually not too bad getting 20s up here looking at the entire map it is dropping from 60 but honestly it could be worse if you just want to play a little bit of apex legends for fun casually you know not competitively you might be able to do some things the thing is with these graphics and the performance of course i think you will be at a big disadvantage especially if somebody throws a smoke for example in the middle of a fight it's gonna drop a little bit it's actually surprisingly not dropping. <laughs> it's still in the 40s, okay, <laughs> all right. But if somebody throws out an ultimate, you will probably be screwed. All right. Doesn't really drop that much. I was really expecting it to drop to like 20 something. Oh, I hear the steps. I hear their steps. Come on in, old painless is waiting. Incoming. There he is. There he is. I'm gonna die. Maybe. They might have noticed me. I don't know. I should definitely stay where I am. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna take this shot. I don't care, guys. I really want to get a kill. Oh, oh we got one. We got one. See? It's possible to play like this. They're always running away. I don't get it. Now, Forza Horizon 5 and 4 unfortunately don't launch at all in the GTX 470 or any other Fermi GPU. It will just give us a crashing error or something. Yep, there we go. The, actually, we can ignore the warning, but nothing's gonna happen really. In Forza 4, you can actually get to the menus, but then when you load the game, it will do the same thing, black screen and it dies. So unfortunately, these are two games that would probably have been playable, at least on a GTX 580, but they aren't because the game just crashes. Next up is the beautiful Minecraft Java Edition running Optifine. This is the version 1.18.1, .1, latest version, using the like high settings, as you can see right here. Everything is basically turned up to the maximum, aside from a couple of settings here and there. These as well, performance, other, playing at 1080p, by the way, animations all turned on, details, this is it, and the shaders that we're using utilizing our Silders Vibrant Shaders Medium version 1.32 and uh, look at this it actually is very playable and it looks absolutely amazing this is really nice guys honestly I did not expect it to drop this far <laughs> we were getting 40s oh now I'm a little bit sad all right <laughs> and without shaders of course as this is Minecraft it's just 
a buttery smooth experience right now, especially because we have that Ryzen 9 5900X. Now, again, you don't really need that as beefy as a CPU as the Ryzen 9. Something like an i5 4460 should be enough to achieve these FPS as well. Next up is Rainbow Six Siege. We're playing this at 1080p using 90 FOV and the low settings preset. That means that the render scaling is actually set to 50 and that the game is running at 764p. Now, the fact that we're not running this at native resolution might sound like this won't look very good, but actually, just take a look at it. It almost looks like 1080p, right? I mean, if, if somebody told me that it, this is 1080p resolution, I would probably believe them. It looks really good, whatever Ubisoft did in this game with the TAA, in the aliasing implementation, and the 50% resolution scale. I mean, you can see some aliasing, of course, in some of the things, but it's not bad looking by any means. Like GTA 5, for example, has a lot more aliasing and it runs at 1080p native. So yeah, look at the performance, by the way. It sometimes will drop into the 50s. Not the end of the world, honestly. I feel like in a game like Rainbow Six Siege, you should aim for higher than 60 though. So dropping the resolution to 720p, for example, would probably do that. But hey, it can still play the game at 1080p resolution and it almost got 69, no, it actually got 69 FPS there at the end. Perfect stuff. <laughs> Time to visit our boy Jack. We're playing this one in DirectX 10 at 1080p resolution using the high settings and normal textures because if I set that too high, it consumes almost two gigabytes of VRAM, which we don't have, of course. But everything else is basically set to the high settings except for post effects, which introduces motion blur. These are all turned off. Let's go. I really hope it doesn't stutter though, because we only have 1.2 gigabytes of VRAM and they seem to be already maxed out. Yeah, this is pretty damn smooth, not gonna lie, super playable. It's a 60 FPS experience basically in GTA 5. This game came out on PC five years later than the GTX 470 and this card is performing better than 2017's GT 1030. This is incredible performance for a card like this. I wasn't really expecting it to do this well, honestly. Holy crap. That was amazing. Damn, guys. Of course, the ultimate test will be in Jack's Hill. And also, I'm running it in DirectX 10 compared to DirectX 11 on the 1030, now that I remember it. But on paper, this should be a little bit faster than 1030. And the GTX 460 is the one that is comparable to that card. Yeah, but all right. We're doing great here. Let's go. We got this. We're not going to hit any ball. That doesn't count. It's on the side. Doesn't count. The guy was the one that, that went... Oh, boy. All right, we're good. We're good. She's good. Yes. You know, it, it doesn't count if you run over people. It only counts if you kill them. So it's fine. Uh, and over in Jack's Hill, it doesn't drop too much because we're running DirectX 10 instead of 11. So the grass quality is just set to normal, I guess. Yeah, pretty damn good. Anyway, see Jacqueline. All of that goodness, and then we ended up with Jack. No, 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 no. We can't end up with Jacqueline. And if anybody wonders why I don't like Jacqueline, it's because she cheated on Jack, and we don't like cheaters here in this channel. I have a very hard time with cheaters like Bob. You know, he cheats in CSGO, so that's why I don't like him. That's Jacqueline again. I don't want to say you, Jacqueline. I told you, stop calling me names. Jack, there we go. There is my boy. How's it going? Ah, looking beautiful today, aren't you? And not eating bunnies still. Still a vegetarian, I see. Next up, we got Fortnite at 1080p resolution using far view distance, low settings, and performance mode. Guys, I'm not sure, but I think they have fixed these stuttering issues. The frame time is not perfect, it's far from it actually, but I, I'm not seeing those huge frame time spikes or stutters. This is pretty good actually. Whoa, I'm hearing somebody, and he has a shotgun. Where the heck? There he is! Nice! Okay, okay. What the actual hell? Is this how performance mode is like right now? I, I don't... What is that? Holy crap, guys. It might just be the GPU that's too old. I, I'm not sure, because when I started the game, it actually gave me a message saying that there are some graphical bugs with this card because the drivers are not supported. 
that might be it. I'm not sure. Oh my gosh, it just looks like some molten plastic or something. <laughs> molten metal as well. Ugh. <laughs> you know what? Maybe running in DirectX 11 mode would fix it. I'm not sure though. It's possible. Hearing some audios. There he is. Come on. There, there we go. Where? What? There he is. Nice. What? Just... Hey now, let's play Rust at 1080p resolution using like competitive settings, I guess. Draw distance set to 2000, everything else set to the minimum. I'm not sure if these are really competitive settings, but uh, I feel like I would honestly have fun playing like this, guys. You can still spot people at the distance because of the draw distance. The shadows look awful <laughs> at these settings. But yeah, it's running pretty well, although we get some frame time spikes. Yeah, very noticeable ones as well. You can see it right there in the graph. Yeah, you will need 16 gigabytes of RAM as a minimum, and you you will probably be VRAM bound in just a little bit. Maybe that's why we're getting these frame time spikes. That's pretty weird, actually. I didn't really see those with a GTX 460, but the game has gotten a lot of updates and it has become more intensive. Mm. Could I recommend this for someone who's desperate to play Rust? I could see them playing like this, especially because a lot of people have told me that they can play this game and they are playing this game with like 25 FPS. There's a naked guy over here, or gal. How, how's it going? How's it going? I'm just gonna try to go to the forest right there to see the FPS dropping. But yeah, if people can play this game at 30 or 25 frames per second, they can play the game at like 40 plus with stuttering issues. It's not really that the game stops, like in Fortnite, for example, or when Fortnite was broken. It's just kind of weird, a little bit of a slowdown. If I pan my mouse around like this, yeah, it's almost not noticeable, but it is a little bit noticeable. Yep, okay, I can see, like, it's a little jitter that happens there. Not the full-on stutter, you know. We're playing Valorant now at 1080p using low settings with textures on high and improved clarity turned on. Also, FPS are pretty high, but that's to be expected. This is Valorant after all, so it runs very well. I suck at Valorant now, guys. <laughs> that was horrible. <laughs> He's probably waiting for me right now. Yep, there he is. <laughs> uh, freaking camper. Oh my gosh. Okay, oh, there's another one. Come on. Oh my gosh, I can't. I don't know the recalls. Just can't. I just, these guys are too good. I don't know what happened with Valorant. I used to be really good at it and finish first every single time I played it for these videos, but now. I, I, I even die from falling. <laughs> what the heck? Get all of you. I am done with this. I am done. Ah, quick reactions. Quicker reactions. Come on, Chris. Come on, Chris. This was awful. That was absolutely terrible. No, no, no. Oh, my God. So annoying. I really am not enjoying this, guys. Although the FPS are pretty good, you know. I just it's it just sucks to me to see that I I sucked so much right now. <laughs> yeah. It's Dota 2. Now we're playing this one at the medium settings, 100% render scaling, 1080p resolution, and we're actually using it in borderless window mode because if I set it to exclusive full screen, it doesn't have a 1080p option. Okay, now I was not expecting these FPS. This is pretty good for the fidelity that we're having as well. It looks really nice on medium settings, this game. Very colorful and vibrant and... Uh, actually, there, there are shadows even. I just want to see it in a team fight though. Can it be like a competitive experience? It's dropping with all of these effects. Yeah, but it, it's not dropping from 60, so I think you can't even play this game competitively with a GTX 470. No stutters whatsoever as well. This is flawless here. Very, very nice performance indeed. Look at this. It drops into the 60s though. But it's no problem. Damn. 
I was expecting a little bit worse, honestly. <laughs> wow. And also, when you lock it to 60 FPS right here, that means that the GPU utilization will go down considerably, and you will save more power. So, you'll have a really great experience in Dota 2, while not consuming 215 watts all of the time if you lock the FPS to 60, so... And that goes for other games as well. And finally, for the last game, I got Ark Survival Evolved. We're playing at 720p resolution using low settings with epic anti-aliasing, which is not intensive in this game, by the way. Resolution scale is set to the maximum and... Yeah, these are just the low settings. I'm also utilizing the extremely low memory mode. Jesus Christ, that's so loud. All right, let's... <laughs> Shut up! What the heck? I'm, I think I'm just gonna mute the sound of this one and ignore the bastards after us. <laughs> Look at them. So we're getting around 60 frames per second and that guy finally got off of us. Oh, stuttering issues. That's completely normal in Ark Survival Evolved, by the way. It's because of its engine. Um, but yeah, this is pretty damn good, considering that we are in sort of a forest area here, I guess, or a jungle area. Pretty nice performance. It's one of the few games where you can actually pick up crap, so I'm fine with that. Can we, can we hold it in our hands? No, we can't actually throw it! I didn't know! <laughs> I'm gonna throw you a ball of crap! What are you doing? <laughs> Oh man, I'm gonna have so much fun in this one now. <laughs> no, he did. Oh, oh, no, okay. Oh, no, this this was bad. I threw him crap, he threw me vomit. <laughs> that's, that's fair, I guess. That's fair. I said it's fair. Go away now. <laughs> now, conclusion time. Do I recommend the GeForce GTX 470 in 2022? 12 years later. Damn! <laughs> well, if you asked me this question two years ago in 2020, when the GPU crisis wasn't here yet, I would say no, because it consumes a heck of a lot of power, uh, the drivers are outdated, it's just an outdated GPU, of course. But now, you can't buy GPUs anywhere, GT 1030s are like 120 bucks, so I think it makes a little bit of sense if you can find a GTX 470 for like 30 bucks maximum. That's 30 euros or 30 dollars. Yeah, I had a lot of fun testing out a GTX 470 here today. And most of the games that we tested were actually playable and enjoyable. So I don't see why somebody with like a GT 710 or 730 DDR3 wouldn't upgrade to this and have fun as well. So... You know, it, it consumes a lot of power, yes, you will pay the power bills, yes, but at least you got a GPU and you can have fun with it and not pull your hair out uh, with GT710s and stuff. So yeah, actually speaking of, I need to cut my hair. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to give it a like if you enjoyed it and if it was helpful to you, of course. And I'll catch you in the next one very soon, hopefully with a new haircut. Love you all. Bye-bye.